Hello, everybody. Welcome to Treehouse Portland. <laughs> Woo! That's right. How many of you are Treehouse students? Yeah, all right. How many people code Oregon? Oh, right on. Woo, code Oregon. Cool. And for those of you who are not Treehouse students, why not? But that's okay. We welcome all here. Only a matter of time. Only a matter of time before the Empire will steamroll you over and you'll be joining us. So I'm here to talk about hosting your portfolio on GitHub for free. Do you know you can do that? So GitHub, we all know GitHub as a place that you can sh share your code with other people in the community. Or if you work in an organization, you can have an organizational GitHub account where all the developers can put their code, pull down the code, work on it. So for example, at Treehouse, we have an organizational account. We have a private repository, actually several private repositories, one that holds all the code for the Treehouse website. So all the stuff you see on Treehouse, all, all, how the videos work, how the code challenges work, how workspaces work, all that stuff is on GitHub. You can't get to it because it's private. But it's up there, and all of our developers use GitHub to pull down the code, make changes, push it back up, make pull requests, and then eventually push it up live onto our website. So you probably know that GitHub lets you do that. But GitHub also lets you host a website. Um, in fact, you can host multiple websites, and it's all completely free. So you may not know this, Get Bootstrap, everybody know what Bootstrap is? So Twitter Bootstrap is a kind of framework for making websites. It includes CSS and HTML and JavaScript and a way to make it easy to create yeah, good looking websites very quickly. Um, their website for Bootstrap is getbootstrap.com, but this is actually GitHub. It's hosted on GitHub. GitHub is supplying all of the web hosting for Twitter Bootstrap's getbootstrap.com site. Nodeschool.io. So if you're doing Node, that's a JavaScript, sort of server-side JavaScript um, stuff. In fact, Andrew Chalkley will be teaching a course here soon on Node. That will go on tree next month, go up on Treehouse. But anyway, nodeschool.io, that's a website that is hosted on GitHub. Same with this, webcomponents.org. So all of these are examples of websites that GitHub does the web hosting for free. So there are some limitations for what you can put up on GitHub. Um, first of all, there's no server-side stuff. So you're not going to do Ruby, you're not going to do PHP, you're not going to do Python, can't have WordPress up there. So that kind of sucks, but it's free. So it's static websites only. So it's your HTML, CSS, JavaScript. You, know, you can throw up an index.html page and suddenly the world will see your portfolio or whatever it is that you want to host. Um, it does support this thing called Jekyll. Anybody ever heard of Jekyll? Jekyll is uh, basically a static website generator. Um, based uh, uses Ruby. So it lets you write pages, and then you can, I have never used it, but you can run some Ruby command, blah, magic, and then it like creates your navigation, and it builds all the pages, and you get this static website relatively easily. Static, when I say static, I just mean it's like regular index.html, CSS, JavaScript, no server-side programming. Um, but uh, GitHub Pages supports Jekyll, so you can use Jekyll to create a static website and push it up to GitHub for the world to see. So let's talk about the types of websites you can build with uh, GitHub Pages, it's called. There's two kinds. There are project pages, and project pages are really repo pages or repository pages. So on GitHub, you create these separate repositories, and each repository holds code for a project that you're working on. So you can have you know, one project you're working on is one repo. A different project is another repo. And each of those repositories can have its own website. So that's really cool if you're building, like say, an open source uh, piece of software and you've got it up on GitHub for people to see, you can have a little website that explains what it is, maybe demonstrates it, um, you know, provides information, just like the getbootstrap.com site. All right. So here's an example of one. This is for one repo that I created uh, called Display Markdown. And really all it does is take a Markdown file and turn it into HTML so that you can put it on a website and see Markdown as HTML. Um, but the important thing that I want to look at is the URL for this. So it's sawmac.github.io slash display-markdown. 
So Sawmac is my username at GitHub. So when you sign up with GitHub and you create an account, you have a username. You know, it could be your name or something that you make up. Then every repository has its own name. So I have display dash markdown. That's the name of my repository. Now, GitHub pages aren't on github.com. They're hosted on github.io. Um, it used to be on github.com, but people kept bringing all of GitHub down by putting up weird things on their GitHub pages, and GitHub realized that was bad, so they created a separate domain, github.io. So when you have a repository and a username, you can create a URL like this, and it will host pages for you. So for example, this is... This is the web page. This is my GitHub page for this repository. Nothing big, it's just a single web page, and then it takes me back to the repo, and that's my repo on GitHub. Okay. The other type of pages you can create are called user pages, and you only have one of these per user account on GitHub. So basically a user page is for your entire GitHub account. So it might be something that you use to advertise your organization or to discuss the biggest project that your, that your a particular GitHub account is, uh, supports. Um, so for example, this is one that doesn't really say anything. I just made it up today, so you can read it. It doesn't say anything. But this is on my sawmac.github.io, and this is called a pro, uh, user pages. So basically, it's the username .github.io, and that's it. Okay? And within that, I can host in uh, web pages, CSS, JavaScript, static websites. So those are the two types. We have project pages and user pages. So each of them you create slightly differently or you have to put onto GitHub slightly differently. Let's start with project pages. They're pretty easy to understand. So with project pages, all you need to do is create a branch on GitHub named gh-pages. And anything that you put in that branch and anything you push to that branch on GitHub will now appear on GitHub.io. Pretty simple and easy to do. And I'll show you how to do it step by step. So the first thing you're going to do is you'll create a GH Pages branch. So for those of you who are not are kind of new to um, GitHub and stuff, what I'm going to be talking about is this particular uh, repository. So I already have a uh, repository that I created on GitHub. It's called OpenPrompt. I wrote this kind of uh, teleprompter software. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> teleprompters. Everybody needs a good teleprompter. Isn't that true? Probably late at night, you're like, where's my teleprompter? I wish I had a teleprompter. Well, maybe you don't, but Wade does. Our video guys do. They love teleprompters. So I wrote up this thing. It uses some jQuery, it uses JavaScript to create kind of a teleprompter so that you can read the screen and look like you've memorized things. Uh, so it's called OpenPrompt, and this is my repository. Now if you go to, and I'll show you, this is where the page for it would be, but it doesn't exist yet. So it would be sawmac.github.io slash OpenPrompt. Okay, so this would be my project page, but I haven't created it yet, so there's nothing there. But we're going to do that. So I need to create a branch called GH Pages. And then within that branch, I can make any changes that I want. So whatever exists in that branch is what will go up onto the website and will be distributed through GitHub pages. Okay, so that would be your index.html, because that would be your home page or main page for that particular project. Um, but it can be multiple pages. You can have lots of pages and lots of different assets, images, CSS, and JavaScript. So this I'm talking about kind of on my local site. So locally working on my computer, I'm going to make a branch of my local version of this pro repository that I'm working on. And then within that branch, I'll make any changes. Cool, I want to do this and this and this. This will be the website for this project. And then when I'm done, from my local machine, I push that branch up to GitHub. And once it's up on GitHub, it can be accessed. So the first thing I need to do is create a branch called GH Pages. And this is how you do that. You do git checkout minus b, minus b is for branch, and then the name of that branch. Now, it has to be gh-pages. Any other name, and GitHub is going to ignore it, at least in terms of something that it's going to try to host on github.io. So let me go over to terminal, 
and make sure I'm in the right place. Yep. And I'll just say GitHub, I mean git checkout minus b gh dash pages. Okay, so I now have created a new branch. In git, I can run the git branch command, and it'll show me I have two branches, master and now gh pages. Okay, the one that's got the star and is green, that's the one I'm currently working on. So I'm just going to ls in here, and you'll see I've got some stuff. I've got a CSS folder, I've got an index.html, I've got a libs folder. Let me give you a long listing here. So I got some stuff in there. And you'll notice that there's a .git folder. I already have git working. This whole repository, all these files are now in the git system. Um, if you're never done git, you can come talk to me. I did a presentation on git a few months ago. I can give you a URL where all the notes are if you want to use that to get started. On Treehouse, we have a Git course, so you can learn some basics of Git there. Um, but anyway, this is an active repository on my local machine. I'm now working in a branch called GH Pages. And all I have to do is push GH Pages up to the web server. So the way you do that, you say git push origin, and the name origin represents GitHub. Origin is where my repository is. And then I say gh-pages. And what that means is push this new branch all the way up to GitHub. In the process of doing that, it will create on GitHub that branch. So I'll have a, a gh-pages. In fact, let me go over here just so you can see. This is GitHub. These are my branches. Currently, I have one branch, master. That's it. So let me clear this, and if I just say git push origin gh-pages, and it does some stuff, and when I go over here and I reload, you'll see I now have a branch called gh-pages. Okay. And then we wait. Uh, sometimes it's really fast. Sometimes you get that website immediately. Sometimes it takes up to 10 minutes. I don't know. Their server's doing something. I don't know. Checking to see if I'm messing with them or what. But let's see. Maybe it's ready. Oh, yeah. There it is. See? And the answer to your, your dreams. It's teleprompter software. Isn't that cool? <laughs> it's free, open source. Use it as you will. Look, you can speed it up. You can slow it down. I'm so proud of this little project of mine. But now, this is now a GitHub project page. Like that. That's it. Done. Woo! Simple. Web hosting for free. Thank you, GitHub. All right, so that's a project page. Keynote. Uh-oh, where's Keynote? There we go. All right. So we didn't even have to wait 10 minutes. Here's a couple tips, little things you might want to use. Um, git checkout dash dash orphan gh dash pages. What that does is create a branch that um, for with no files. It doesn't keep track of the files that you um, already had in there. And that's useful if, for example, uh, your repo isn't really about like a website. Maybe it's a repo for you know some iOS stuff that you've developed. So all your iOS code is up on GitHub. But you would like to create a nice little website that explains what the project is. And in that case, you're not doing iOS stuff, you're doing web stuff. So within the GH Pages branch, you can add an index.html file, CSS, JavaScript, images, and create a little mini website totally separate from your Swift or you know, iOS code that you've written. Push it up just like I did. And now you've got your project with all the code that people can see in the repository and a nice little website that explains what that project is. Okay. You can also delete a remote branch. Maybe you guys are tired of you know, having this GH Pages thing. This is how you delete a remote branch. All right. And all these um, slides and everything, I'll have up. They are up online. I'll tell you where when we're done. All right, so the other type of pages are user pages, and those are for your entire GitHub account. It's a little bit more complicated, a little bit more stuff that you do for that, but you can do some more interesting things with your user pages, okay? 
So the main difference with these types is you have to create a brand new re repository, totally separate repository on GitHub that is named your username.github.io. That has to be the name of the repository. And once you have that repository, anything you put into that repo on GitHub will become your user website or your user pages. Oh, thanks. Okay. So it's kind of different. The other method, you have to create a branch and push it up. This one, you actually create a brand new repo, and all this repo is for is your website, this user website that you're creating. Okay. How do we do that? So we need to go to GitHub and we create a new repo, username.github.io, for example. And then we create the site. This is on our local machine. We create an index.html. We create CSS, JavaScript, images. We build it any way we want. We could use that Jekyll uh, thing if you're into, if you know Ruby well and want to get that installed. Or you could use Twitter Bootstrap or any way that you normally use to create a static website. You can do that. And you're doing that on your local computer. Thanks, Wade. And then once you have that site, you need to create a local Git repo for that site, for the pages. So you have to say, this is a, a Git repository. And I'll show you how to do that. There's a little command that you do. And now all those files can be tracked by Git. Now, they're separate from GitHub, so we're not made the connection to GitHub yet. That is the next step. We add the remote repo on our local machine. So what we do on our local machine is we say, OK, we've got Git working here on this set of files. I'm going to want to push this up to GitHub. And I have to add a remote repository to this particular Git instance. And when I add that, now my computer knows about GitHub. And I can push my files up to GitHub. And that's what I do. And then once you've done that, you have a website. So what we're going to do, I'm going to walk you through something. Live demo, which almost never goes wrong. Uh, my son does Lego League. I'm a coach. We build robots and stuff like that. It's pretty fun. And I'm building a little website for this team. They are the team who shall not be named. Harry Potter fans out there. So this is just on my local computer. You can see this is just what I've done. I've created this. It's all there. But I would like to, I want free web hosting. Who wants to pay even $9.99 a month, 50 cents a month? Forget about it. You can get it for free from GitHub. So I have an account called pdx-fll, first Lego League. And um, I'm going to turn this into a website for the team. All right. So the very first thing that I do is I need to create a new repository. And that repository has to be called pdx-fll.github.io. OK, so it has to be your username dot github dot io. And if you don't do that, it's not going to work. Or at least you'll have a repo that won't be turned into a website. And then you create the repository. Cool. So if you haven't used GitHub before, it's kind of nice. They give a lot of good direction for what you do after you create a repository. So for example, here's some stuff that helps you figure out what your next step might be. So there's a quick, quick setup which lets you clone this repository down to your computer. Um, you can create a new repository, uh, and put new files in it on your computer. What I'm going to want to do is push an existing repository from the command line. What that means is I've already got a website. I've already got a bunch of stuff I've created. And so I want to turn that into a Git repository on my machine and then push it up to this particular repository. So I've created my new repo. Then you create the site. You build it, blah, blah, blah. I built sort of a couple pages. And then once you're done, you go into that folder. So this is all through terminal from the command line. Um, if you're on Windows, like PowerShell or the Git, what is the, is it Git terminal that you, any Windows people here? What? Git, Git bash shell thing. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, that's what you would use. Um, there are like GUI you know, tools for managing Git. I've never learned them. So there are ones out there that are probably easier. But I've learned this. So this is easy to me. So the command line's friendly to me. So we say git init, and that creates a new repository. And you have to do it in your working directory, in the directory that holds your website. I'll do that in a second. 
git add dot, what that does is say, take all my files in that, in that folder and add it to what's called staging. Staging is sort of this middle ground before you say, okay, I'm ready to commit all this stuff to a tracking system that will keep track of all the files and all the changes that I make to this collection of files. And then finally you do commit, git commit minus m, minus m stands for message, and then some message. Initial commit is a common one when you first create a repository. Every time you make a change to the repository and you want to change it, your messages should be a little bit more uh, descriptive, like added new CSS or removed outdated HTML page, something like that. Okay, so I'm going to go over here, oops, not there, and I'm just going to check to make sure, yep, I'm in my pdx fll github.io. So I'm going to do git in it. So this says initialized an empty git repository. So this is the first step you would take to create a local git repository. So I've got that. Now once I have it, I can do their commands like git status, which tells you the stuff. And so this one, all the stuff in red says these are untracked files. Well, that's because I just created this repo. None of those things have been added to the repo. So they're all untracked or brand new files. So let me clear this and I'll say git add dot. And so now all of those, and when I do git status, you'll see they change color. Now they're green. So we're now in this place called staging. And staging is sort of this middle ground before from your working files that you just worked on to this sort of I'm about ready to agree that these things are important to add to my repository. And then we have the final commit where we put it into our repository. So I'm going to say git commit minus m initial commit and if I do a git status now it'll say nothing to commit. We're working, the working directory is totally clean. Okay, so that means I've, I've committed all my changes. All the stuff is now in this local repository. So I have this remote one and I have my local one with all my files in it. Okay. <clears throat> now we add a remote repository. And what that means, this is how we have to, how we tell our local computer that the files that we're working on on our local repository are really connected to GitHub, to this repository that exists in the cloud on GitHub's website. And it's a lot to type, but you type git remote add or origin. So git is, the, is git, and then remote is a command you use to manage these remote connections with other uh, services. GitHub's just one. There's others you can connect to. You can, you can use remote, um, uh, you could have a, a private local network, and you can use remote repositories there too. But to get to GitHub, we say git remote add, so we're going to add origin, and origin is actually, you don't have to name it origin, it's just kind of the convention, and everyone seems to name it origin, but you could name it orange, or you could name it GitHub, whatever you would like. But um, often people want to name it origin to, to indicate that it's kind of the canonical repository of all your files for this particular project. And then you add this thing, git at github.com. And then it's your username slash username.github.io.git. Now, that's a lot to remember. That's a lot to even type down. But remember I said that Git's pretty, GitHub's pretty helpful? When I created that repo, it actually told me. Here it is. I could just copy and paste this. That's what you need to type. And then once you're done with that, then you can do this push thing, Bob. Now, I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to do this thing where, look, I'm typing, but I'm not typing. <laughs> I also created this thing that just types for me, which is really great when I have to type long things that I might make a typo at. So there you go. OK, so I've now added that. If I say git remote, it's showing me I've got this thing called origin, git remote. Is it dash r? Is that what gives you? No. Git remote dash r. No. What's the thing that tells you what a lot more about remote? Jim? Git remote, oh, dash V, yeah, verbose. There we go. Boop. All right. So now it's telling me 
back. Let me clear this so you can all see. There you go. So now it's telling me where these origin is. And there's for fetching and pushing. So fetching is when I pull stuff down, and pushing is when I push stuff up. All right. So I've now added my remote repository. And then I push this to GitHub. So I type git push origin master. So I'm going to push to origin, that's GitHub, my master branch. Okay. We saw earlier when I did a, uh, a Google pages for, um, I mean, GitHub pages for a re repo, we pushed up a branch called gh-pages. GH okay. Here I'm pushing up the master branch. So I just say git push origin master. And if we're lucky, yes, it's working. That's cool. If you've ever done public speaking and public demoing of stuff, it can go sideways quickly. So I think it's working. Let's check it out. All right, then you wait 10 minutes, because it may take that long. Do we have any jazz music we can play, Michael? It may not take that long. OK, it's pushed up, so we've got it there. Let's go look and see. That's the static site. So we should have pdx-fll-github.io. What? It works. Look at that. Free web hosting. Thanks, Michael. We didn't need it. It didn't take 10 minutes. So this is now a website hosted up on GitHub. And if any of these links actually worked and took you to web pages, I'd click on them. But I had to create a quick demo for this talk. So this is what you get, one page. But it could be more. You could make a lot more if you got the time to do it. So that's pretty easy, huh? I mean, it's not, it's not much of a talk. There's, that's about it, all you need to know. There's a few other things you might want to do. You can. You notice when I showed you Bootstrap, get bootstrap.com, it didn't say bootstrap.github.io, right? They actually have their domain name pointing right to that GitHub, um, GitHub page. And the same thing with nodeschool.io and with uh, whatever else I showed you. So there's a way to do that, adding a C name record. So this gets a little hairy if you've done DNS stuff, domain name server stuff. So if you have your own domain, and you get it through, what domain services do you all use? Hover. What's that? Hover. Hover? Yeah. All right. Hover? Docster. 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 Namecheap. That's one. Domain.com. What's that? I want my name. For real? Yeah. I want my name. <laughs> you can have it. So there's all these places where you get your domain name. You register that. And when it's registered with these domain name services, you can frequently good ones let you go in and muck around with some of the records there. And one of them is called the C name or C name alias. And it will let you point to a server, point something to a server. So for example, and each one is different. Each DNS provider usually are kind of different. So I, I'm not going to show you an example actually using my like domain.com <clears throat> because they all change, are all quite different. But for example, I'm going to take www and point it to pdxfll.github.io. So um, the particular domain that I've purchased for this team is pdx-robotics.club. Now that's cool, right? pdx-robotics.club. So I own that domain. So I'm going to make it so that people type www.pdx-robotics.club. It's going to go to GitHub and my github.io. But they're not going to see that. They're not going to see that it's GitHub. They're going to think it's you know, pdx-robotics.club hosted somewhere else. So you do that at your DNS provider. Then also, in your repo, you create a file called CNAME. And in that, you put whatever the URL is. So www.pdx-robotics.club. It could be portfolio.yourname.com. It could be, you know, pages.mystory.com, whatever it is. And then you push that C name file up to the repo. So let's see if we can get it to work. This may, may or may not work, but I want to see. I'm going to create this thing. All right, cool. And then I'm going to save it. 
I'm actually typing this. C name, and that's it, just C name, boom. And now that's added to my local repository. It's on my computer here. And when I go, I can say git, let me clear this so you can see, git status. And so there's one untracked file. That means it's a brand new file that I added to this repository. I can say git add C name. And now that's added. You can see it's green. And then I just say git commit minus M. Add C name. And now that's there. Now it's on my computer, but it's not on GitHub. So I say git push origin master. And then that goes up. And let's just look here at the GitHub repo. And you'll see there it is, C name. Look, I added it 22 seconds ago. Okay, so this can take 10 minutes. It can actually take longer. It can take hours. So um, if we're lucky, I'll come back in a couple minutes. We'll try out pdx www.pdx robotics.club and we'll see. Well, let's try it now. What do you say? Oh, okay. So, yeah, so there it is there. But now www.pdx robotics.club. Oh, okay. Oh, what? Huh? It is pointing to GitHub. Interesting. So, so the question is, did I have that GH Pages? You don't need a GH Pages branch. You don't want a GH Pages branch for this particular, for a user level website. Uh, the problem is probably with my domain registrar. I probably have to go in and change the CNAME record again. It might, I might have, because I deleted this repo and recreated it for this demo, it might not be there. But, you know, pretend it's just there. Pretend, yeah, look, there it is. Just don't look at the URL. It does work. I had it working earlier today, and I took the whole thing apart to rebuild the demo for you guys tonight. So it is possible to have your own domain name. And that's what you're probably going to want if you are, uh, you know, have your portfolio or whatever hosted up on GitHub. You'll want it to be your name instead of this weird github.io. All right, let's talk about a couple more things, and then we're done. That's it. It's pretty easy to do. Uh, there is an article. And like I said, these files will all be, the PDF will be up online. I'll tell you where in a little bit. <clears throat> and GitHub has lots of pages to help you get through the process of pointing your domain to GitHub pages. It can be a pain. It took me a couple days, actually, working with my, reg with my domain registrar to figure it out exactly. But it is possible, and it, uh, it's great when you do it. And so it's free web hosting with GitHub. Uh, GitHub has this other thing, which I'll just point out, not something I would use, but um, if you're like really in a hurry, you've got a project, maybe, you, maybe you're like an iOS developer, you know nothing about web development, you don't care to learn about HTML or CSS or JavaScript, but you still want to have a nice little page up describing your project, you can do that with GitHub's this automatic page generation feature, which I'll demonstrate. But basically, uh, when you go to a repo, you can click settings for that repo. And then there's a little button there that says Automatic Page Generator, which I'll show you. And then there's a form. You fill it out. You type some stuff. And then you even pick a template. They have all these templates that you can pick from. Some are more beautiful than others. And then you can save it. So this is what it looks like to create a page. And let me actually do one. We'll go to my PDX FLL. And there's a branch here called 2014, which doesn't have anything in it. But if I go to Settings, down over here in the uh, right, you'll see there's the automatic page generator option. I click it, and so I can you know, say, welcome to my site. Oot, a tagline. And then you can put in whatever you want in here in like Markdown, or it uses GitHub Markdown format, so, um, you know, hi. <laughs> You know, and then you could type some things. I guess I should have used my automatic typing program to do something. But there you go. And boom. And in fact, you can even post in a little Google Analytics little thing, and it'll track, you know, Google Analytics 
for you. And then you say, continue to layouts, and you can pick slate, mellow, time machine, minimal, that looks crappy, leap day, modernist. Okay, we got to vote. Which one do we want? Hack. Look, because that's what hackers are like. This is how hackers are. <laughs> this is when people are late at night. Architect. All right. Let's vote. Tactile? Yes or no? I sort of, I heard something. Dinky. Oh, that looks crappy. Architect. 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 So, how about hack? It's a, oh, okay. It's the hackers have it. Then we choose it and we choose public, publish page. And now when I go to pdx fll github.io slash 2014, boom, there it is. All right. So as far as I can tell, it doesn't really let you, I don't think you can add more than one page. <laughs> So it's just kind of a starter. And so there's, you can see a GH Pages branch. That wasn't there just a minute ago. That was created when I created that new page. Um, and then once you've got it, you can pull that down. You, can da you could uh, 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 clone that, the repo and that branch and then work on it and then push it back up to GH Pages, and there you have it. But if you just need like a nice one little page summary, you can use a simple little thing to explain your project, your GitHub project to the world and send that URL out for people to look at. It also works for um, your user. So the user is the same. Here's the PDX fll.github.io. You still have to create that repo, but once you've created it, you can go to settings and also use automatic page generator. I'm not gonna because I have my beautiful website up there, but you could do that. All right, and believe it or not, that's it. That's all there is to GitHub pages. My PDF is on this particular GitHub thing, because it's GitHub all the time. And you can download the PDF from there and get all of these notes. I'm now open for questions. <laughs>